Welcome to Research Tools Video 4, Yet More Emacs. My name is Kurt Schwer, and today I'm going to take you through a little bit more of Emacs. I have created an org mode file to have an overview of what we'll do today in this little short video. We'll look at our bash rc file which sets up our shell. We'll take a look at some fun things inside of Emacs, Tetris, and the Doctor program. We'll look at man pages inside of Emacs. We'll look at documentation inside of Emacs in the info system. And we'll take a quick peek at a large org mode file. And we'll grab a tar file that's from that class. And we'll actually show you that you can dig into the insides of a tar file without un untarring it onto your disk or unpacking this archive of many files. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's put my screen here with Control X2. And I'm going to put leave this up on the top with my list, and I want to go to the bottom window, Control X, and then the letter O. And let's start by opening up our .emacs file, and we're on Ubuntu Linux, which comes with a default bash rc. This is a configuration file that controls how the shell runs. And this is a shell script, basically, that gets run every time you create a new shell. And it's got lots of different options in it. But there's one I'd like to add to it that isn't in there. And uh, if we look here, they, they have a .bash aliases file. So we can do control X2, split that. And let's see if there is a .bash aliases. And there's not. It's a new file. So let's create some quick aliases. If we say alias rm equals rm-i alias mv equals mv dash i alias cp equals cp dash i. Now before I save this, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to start a shell, meta x shell, and we'll type alias and we're going to grep for rm. So there is no actual alias for rm in this yet because we have not saved the aliases. If we quit the shell, exit the shell, pardon me, kill it, control X, K, and let's go ahead and save control X, control S, our bash aliases. Now if we do control X, O to go back to this window, and we'll do meta X shell again. So now I'm in a shell, and I'm going to type alias RM, and we'll see now that we have an alias for our RM. Now what does this alias do? This says if we touch a file, touch foo, rm foo, it's now going to ask us, do we actually want to delete this file or not? This will happen if you try to clobber any sort of file, it'll ask you yes or no. Just remember that if you do an rm-f foo, it's not going to ask you anything. F is for force. So now we've added a little bit of safety to our shell environment, and we've also seen our .bash rc and our bash aliases. Uh, you can spend quite a bit of time customizing your aliases inside of the shell. But I wanted to show you uh, those three aliases that I think should be in all bash rc files. All right, so let's go back up to our top list. And we'll do a control x1 to hide everything else. And we'll say we're done with this with control c, control c. Now, Emacs isn't just for text editing. It has all kinds of capabilities. Now, while this isn't important, it actually shows you how powerful Emacs is. So let's go ahead and run Tetris. So meta x, and this gives you the place where you can enter in any interactive command that Emacs might have. Tetris, and there's only one Tetris. So I hit tab to complete it. And we'll go ahead and hit enter. And this shows you that Emacs is actually quite powerful and has all sorts of features in it. We can play Tetris to our heart's desire, and you can waste a lot of time. Now, uh, pardon the error about the game scores. It's not set up properly for games in this virtual machine. We're not going to actually care about that. So Control X K to kill Tetris and make it go away. Control X 1 to hide all the other windows. And we're done looking at Tetris. Control C, Control C. So let's talk to the doctor. This is the ELIZA program based on initial work in the 60s and 70s to try and simulate a human being. So if we say meta x doctor, we run a program called the psychotherapist. And we can talk to this. And we can say, I am trying to learn 
Emacs, enter, enter, and we can then get a response back from it and you can say I do not want to use VI. I do not like it. Now this is just a, a little program inside of Emacs and it doesn't make a lot of sense but it's a lot of fun and it just demonstrates that you can write interactive programs inside of Emacs and do all sorts of things. So let's go ahead and kill that with Control X K, press Enter, and we'll now mark this off as done with Control C, Control C. Now, inside of the classes, we talked about reading man pages for various programs inside of Unix. Now, what we might want to do is stay completely inside of Emacs as much as possible, and we can still get those man pages. So let's do meta x man, press Enter, and we can then type in, say, tr and press enter. We're now looking at, if we go control X O, the other page, the man page for translate. And you can then scroll through, you can hit control V to go down, meta V to go up, uh, escape or meta less than, we'll go to the top and escape greater than, we'll go to the right. And this will let you uh, scroll through the man page and take a look. Now, actually down here, it's going to lead us into our next topic, and info is the GNU style of information more than man pages, so they tend to focus more of their writing into these info pages. Let me go up here, and we'll say we're finished with man, and we'll go control X zero inside of this window to hide it, and let's go look at info. So this info system, meta X info, is the basically online books for Emacs and all of the GNU tools. There's lots of sections and tons of documentation in here and the section we're going to care the most about is the Emacs section. And so inside of here you can see there's lots of plugins for Emacs have been added. For example here is the manual for the ERC IRC chat client that we'll use in the class and there's how to program inside of Emacs Lisp. There's the actual Emacs manual itself, so if we take a look at that, I'm going to press enter. It's going to now load up the manual for Emacs, and you can see that this manual has been around for a long time, since the 1980s. And you can see that there's lots and lots of features available inside of Emacs, and you can read all about all the details. And you can then use the mouse to scroll around and go up, and you can say click on the Dured manual, and you can say next go to the calendar one, and we can go back to the top. So there's a ton of documentation in here. If you're looking for something specific, you can go through and try to find it. And if you're interested in more about any of the tools that we talk about inside of Emacs, this is a great place to look at that, for example, Shell. So it talks about more of what you can do in there and how to do all sorts of fancy advanced features. So we'll control X and then K to kill our info window. I'll mark that off as done with control C, control C. And let's do something a little bit more focused on the task. Let's look at lecture five from research tools. And inside of that, let's take a look starting with, I'm going to copy this. I did a control space to, to beginning of mark, control E to go to the end. We've now highlighted the region and I'll do a meta W to copy that. And I'm going to jump to back to the shell. I hit tab and then I'm hitting enter for shell. So that was meta X and then a B to get the buffer list and then tab. So now I'm back in here and we can take a look at our directory. We have our video for lecture. We also have a pound file. This is a temporary file written by Emacs when it auto saves. So if you see these come and go, this is just Emacs trying to protect you from a crash or a system power failure. So we've got a difference between those two files. So we can always do a diff star video for star. And you'll see that there's just a little bit of difference between the last time I saved it and what I've done. All right, so let's go ahead and use in that copy buffer is our file that we want to get. So we'll do a wget and then I'm going to do a control Y for yank. And here's our large URL for the org mode file for the, the lecture five. Press enter. Wget went off and grabbed that. So if we do an ls-l, 
we'll now see that we have our Lecture 5. Let's go ahead and open up Lecture 5. So I did a Control X, Control F, and then I did a 5 and then Tab. All right, so here is a very large org mode file with lots of stuff going on in it. And if we search down for Control S and then WGET, you'll see here we're doing a, a single WGET of this examples. And let's just copy this URL, C Control Space, type E for end and meta W to copy it. And let's go, I'm switching to the other screen, Control X, Control, and then, sorry, excuse me, Control X and then an O. So now I'm going to go back to the shell, so meta, excuse me, control X and then a B. Uh, shell is the default, so I'm going to press enter, and we'll say wget and this large uh, URL to a tar. Now this is going to take a moment while it downloads. It's an 80 megabyte file, and it's working along. So things can t generally work just like they do in normal shell, minus a few programs. Like we've seen that Les has trouble with not being able to control the screen. Now inside of this example, we can go back to the top, and if we do go past this little header stuff, and if I do a shift and tab, I can collapse the entire document and do that folding that we talked about in the org mode lecture. And I can go down to the loading examples and I can press tab just on this one, and it will expand just the loading the sample data. And we can hide other things. So wget is just finished up there. We'll do control X, control, and then an O without the control. And now we're in here with our examples. Let's uncompress that. B unzip two examples, press tab, and tab works just the same way as it would in a normal shell. Press enter, and we're now uncompressing that file. I'm going to go back to up here and look through the org mode example. And in this lecture, you'll actually see that we have uh, example blocks that we haven't covered before, but this is just an unhighlighted example block shown exactly is. Here's a source code example and uh, source code that you could actually run. So let's do control X O and let's take a look at our directory. We now have an example.tar. Now Emacs is pretty powerful. It can actually open up a large number of archive formats. So let's go ahead and just open our tar and we're not going to see the binary that we might expect. It's really large. We're going to say yes. And we're now inside of our tar file. So that was control X one to show just this buffer. And we can now take a look through here and we can actually look at all these examples. And so I'm in something very similar to the dured mode where if I can scroll around and I can put my cursor on a file and I can take a look inside of it. So if I press enter on shell script, I'm actually looking at a file inside of a tar, and this is the contents of that file. And you can see here in the shell script bash mode, we have nice coloring to show us various parts of the script. Now we can take a look here, we can take a look down at, here's hello world.c, it's an example C program, if you've never seen C before. And so you can see that there's all sorts of highlighting to show us data types, function names, and strings. So we can do a control X K, kill that, and uh, we're now back to our tar view. So we can do a control X two, control X B. Let's go back to, I'm gonna press tab, our video for lecture notes, and let's go ahead and mark off what we've done here. We've got that one done, control C, control C, get the tar, uncompress it, and look at what's inside. And that's it for this video. I hope you've gotten something out of it and uh, I'll try and do more in the future. Thank you.